Hey, the time is now 6.30 on this May 25th. I'm Caitlin Heck here with Wanya Reese and meteorologist Alex Forbes. Happy yeah. Baby Friday and happy birthday Eve to you, Thank you, Alex. Yes, <laughs> it's uh, coming in fast. 24 next oh. tomorrow. Oh, man. Ooh, man. <laughs> to be 24 again, Caitlin. <laughs> I don't want to hear a Wanya. <laughs> I, am four, I am four years removed. <laughs> I just realized, I was like, oh, wow, Alex is like a baby. Yeah. I am uh, <laughs> almost 10 years removed. So. <laughs> We're not going to go into that. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about yeah, the weather. There we go. <laughs> oh, always, always the off ramp is the weather, right? There we go. All right. So downtown this morning, the sun coming up right now. The official sunrise, 630, 631 right in there. We got temperatures in the 50s this morning, 52 in Macon and in Warner Robins, 55 in Dublin and in Perry, 57 in Milledgeville. So a cool morning by May standards, 51 in Cochrane, 55 in Dudley, 54 in Dublin, 57 up in Milledgeville now, and we've got 53 in Cordial. So the radar picture is much different different from what we've seen the past three days. We don't have the low clouds. We don't have the sprinkles. We don't have the misty nonsense. It's just a clear morning across central Georgia, so we'll take that any day of the week. Temperatures in the 50s now going to warm very quickly now that the sun has come up into the 60s and then eventually the 70s. I do think we get to 81 today before all is said and done, but that for May standards is still very cool. Now, we're looking good today and tomorrow, but scattered storms do begin on Saturday. I'll have more details on that at your Memorial Day weekend forecast in just a moment. Thank you, Alex. We are continuing to follow breaking news this morning. A man is dead after a motorcycle crash on the I-75 and I-16 interchange. The Bibb County Sheriff's Office says it happened just after 3 this morning near the I-16 west exit onto I-75. A tarp that was in the road got caught in the rear tire, causing the driver to lose control and hit the guardrail. Bibb County Coroner Leon Jones says 57-year-old Joseph Bradley Middleton from Perry was driving a Yamaha motorcycle. Deputy Coroner R. Robinson pronounced him dead at the scene. Right now, deputies are still investigating exactly how the crash happened and what led up to it. 632 this morning, the GBI is investigating after a Bibb County deputy shot a man near the campus of Mercer University. And the sheriff's office says Anthony Baldwin Jr. was wanted in connection to a homicide last year and may have been driving a stolen car. The vehicle was, uh, was spotted over off of Houston Avenue. A couple of uh, plainclothes deputies as well as a, a, a patrol uh, deputy uh, followed the vehicle. The shooting happened around 6 last night, according to the sheriff's office, but Sheriff David Davis says it all started earlier around 430. Davis says Baldwin took, quote, evasive moves until deputies followed him down Felton Avenue. He says they never used sirens or lights, and then after the shooting, deputies went to help Baldwin. He went to the hospital and is expected to live. As the GBI investigates, the focus is on if deputies knew Baldwin's daughter was in the car. We're not clear uh, if the deputies knew that there was a child in the vehicle or not. And Davis would not say where Baldwin was shot, only that his injuries were, quote, non-life threatening. Um, there was a lot of contamination. There was a lot of degradation. Um, and we ended up doing all the different techniques necessary to be able to get that DNA, do the forensic grade genome sequencing, upload the DNA profile, and we're able to do the genealogy in-house to identify um, to identify her as Yvonne Plus. Those are just some of the challenges employees at Anthem Labs had to deal with when identifying the remains of Yvonne Pless. Investigators knew she was a victim of serial killer Samuel Little, who confessed to killing dozens of women back in 2018. The private lab in Texas used forensic genetic genealogy to match Pless's remains with her family's DNA. Putnam County Sheriff Howard Sills took evidence to the same lab in hopes of generating new leads in the killings of Russell and Shirley Derman. Well, this morning, two people are in jail in connection to the shooting death of 24-year-old Illegal Dennis. 38-year-old Jarvis Tillman and 30-year-old Amanda Halsey were taken into custody Tuesday afternoon. They're both charged with murder, tampering with evidence, concealing a death, and aggravated assault. Dennis was found in Crawford County dead from being shot. A missing persons report from police in Chatsworth, Georgia, said a woman that he lived with and Dennis's boss couldn't reach him on May 17th. The sheriff's office says they are still investigating. It's 635. The family of Brianna Greer said they're filing a wrongful death lawsuit against the Hancock County Sheriff's Office. She, she deserved justice. Justice for Brianna. Justice for Brianna. Justice for Brianna. Justice for Brianna. Greer is the Hancock County woman who died after she fell from a moving sheriff's car in July of 2022. Her family says that she was suffering a mental health episode at the time. The lawsuit claims gross negligence led to Greer's death on the part of two Hancock County deputies. 
and Sheriff Tomlin Primus. Well, Blackley County couples hosting a pride picnic next month, but not everyone in the community is thrilled about the event. Katie and Nikki Weaver are hosting the picnic in front of the county courthouse. It's for people in Blackley and surrounding counties to show support for one another. The Weavers say they've received threatening messages from people who aren't in favor of the picnic. Nikki Weaver says even students that her child goes to school with voice displeasure about the event. And honestly, that's their right and that's okay. I want everybody to feel like they have a say. It's freedom of speech. It's 2023. And I honestly, I think for me as a mother and as a partner and as a wife and, and just a human being in today's world, it hurts. The Blackley County Sheriff's Office is aware of the event and they do plan to provide security. Since January, Macon Bibbs Planning and Zoning has been enforcing an ordinance that prevents truckers from parking in neighborhoods. Many drivers say they didn't have anywhere else to park, but now community members are offering up a solution. Terry Shrug Parking on Industrial Boulevard says they saw a need and wanted to help out. Don Holtz and Veronica Terry opened back in October. They're former truck drivers, and when they moved to Macon, they saw that there was a lack of secure parking spaces for drivers. Holt says their space holds up to 230 spaces, is open 24-7, has security cameras, gates, and a bathroom. He says they know how truckers feel when they don't have a safe place to stop. We designed this place uh, to make sure that when the drivers came back from being out on the road for days or weeks at a time, that uh, they felt safe and secure that their truck was here. It was really just peace of mind to go home and relax and not have to worry about your equipment because this is hundreds of thousands of dollars worth yes. of equipment here. Well, Laura Corley with our partners at Mercer Center for Collaborative Journalism reports the Bibb School District will dip into its reserves next fiscal year. The school board voted Tuesday night to approve the tentative 2024 budget in a unanimous vote. Superintendent Dan Sims budget includes 410 million in expenses. That's an 18% increase from this year. The school district would pay the difference with its fund balance reserve. The tentative budget includes 43 additional teaching positions, an enrollment increase of almost 240 students, and salary increases for some staff, custodians, and bus drivers. Later this morning, there's a ribbon cutting for reading rooms at the Tubman Museum. The Macon Chamber of Commerce's leadership making class and the Tubman will host the event. The Wimberley Institute Reading and Resource Rooms will have an adult reading lounge and a new children's reading room. The two adjacent rooms will offer a designated space to enjoy books from the museum's library. The rooms are on the second floor near the Tyler Perry exhibit. There's enough space in the children's room for a school classroom to visit. The project costs more than $17,000 in leadership making supplied additional books to fill up the shelves. The project was funded completely by donations. The ribbon cutting happens this morning at 1130 at the Tubman Museum. With Memorial Day weekend coming up and unofficially starting the summer, AAA is providing the tow-to-go service for the holiday weekend. So starting tomorrow at 6 p.m., a tow truck can come pick you up and take you and your car somewhere safe within 10 miles. A AAA spokeswoman says by providing this program, there's no excuse for driving under the influence. But you should treat tow-to-go as a last resort. Make plans to get home safely ahead of time if you can. The program runs through next Tuesday at 6 a.m. As we continue to celebrate all the great grads across Central Georgia, meet one house and county student who isn't letting health problems stop her from living life. Plus, it's Thursday, so it's time for Scene 13. Meet a Macon woman heading off to Vegas with her tribute act. For right now, though, the time is 6.39. We're inching closer and closer to the holiday weekend with so many plans for people. Yes, I peeked outside my window because I'm an, an old man in spirit, and <laughs> all the kids were at the pool yesterday afternoon as Bibb and Housing County students wrap things up. Uh, hard to believe. School year's over. A handful of graduations today as mm -hmm. well over at the Coliseum. We've got uh, West Side, Central, and Northeast oh, all wow. going on today. So great weather for it here in Central Georgia. Waking up to a nice sunrise. It officially came above the horizon here within the past 10 minutes or so. But a cool sunrise. Temperatures this morning, they are in the 50s. 52 in Macon, 54 in Dublin, 55 in Perry, 57 in Milledgeville. It's cool area-wide. 56 in Gordon, 51's the current number there in Cochrane. And there it is. I said I would 
wouldn't be surprised to see a 40 degree temperature and we've got it this morning down in Eastman at 48. Now the radar picture is quite a difference from what we've seen in the past several mornings, right? The low clouds, the sprinkles that we've been dealing with, that is all gone and we're waking up to a much more clear conditions across central Georgia. 52 in Macon, 56 in Charlotte, 59 in Chattanooga. So we are among the coolest on the board this morning thanks to that northeasterly breeze. Now we are going to still look at partly cloudy skies through the afternoon temperatures into the 70s and even low 80s in a handful of spots today. And then once we get to tomorrow, starting off cool once again, although I don't think we're going to be as cool as we are this morning, thanks to just a bit of an increase in cloud cover. But that's going to be thanks to a low pressure system that's coming on shore along the Carolina coast. Now, as it comes ashore, we are going to be looking at scattered showers out near the Savannah River and closer to the Augusta area. But it would not surprise me to see one or two, maybe even five or six of them make their way towards Hancock County, Washington County, and even Johnson County as we get into early Saturday morning and then through the day on Saturday. Now, cloud cover is going to be around, we'll say, east of Interstate 75 through the day on Saturday, and then it'll begin to lift away on Sunday as that low lifts towards the north. But if you're headed to the Carolinas for uh, Memorial Day weekend, you're going to be dealing with some soggy conditions and maybe even a few storms. So there's Sunday here in central Georgia, some scattered stuff, and then same for Memorial Day, just looking at one or two showers, maybe even a storm or two, but I do like the chances of staying dry through the weekend. Now, that low pressure system does have a 10% chance of becoming a tropical system before coming ashore, so a 90% percent chance of not doing so. We'll be keeping an eye on it, but regardless, the rip current threat along the Atlantic seaboard through Memorial Day weekend from the Outer Banks down the entire South Carolina coast, the entire Georgia coast and into northern Florida, that rip current threat is going to be high. So even if it's sunny outside, which it will be along the Georgia and Florida coast, the rip currents will still be around and something to be mindful of as we head into the holiday weekend. Now back here in central Georgia, Memorial Day weekend going to be very cool by May standard 71 on Saturday, the high there 74 on Sunday 79 on Memorial Day itself. All of that is thanks to that northeasterly wind that the low is going to bring us, of course, with those isolated showers as well. But a handful of graduations today, 10, 1 and 4 over at the Coliseum. Look for our temperatures in the 70s to warm into the 80s. 81 will be our high and that is still cool for the end of May with our average high being right around 88. So there's the seven day forecast. Again, going to go through a cool stretch through Memorial Day weekend with a 20% chance of rain each day back to the mid 80s by the middle part of next week. Now, Memorial Day marks the unofficial start of summer. Students may be out of the classroom, but they do stay busy. You might want to take them to the pool, go boating or swim in the river or even the ocean. Let's throw sports in the mix as well. It's a fun time of year, no doubt about it, but it can be dangerous too. And that's why we put together a summer safety special. We're exploring the different topics from rip currents to mosquitoes, snakes and heat illnesses, all to help keep you and your family safe this summer. Watch the 30 minute special tomorrow at 530 right here on 13 WMAZ.